Hello. <laughs> Folks, a quick change even before I start today. You know, this is this is part of a talk shop that truth crash to earth shall rise again. What else do we say? We say that we tell the truth and let the chips fall where they may. But we have a new slogan now. We have a mighty slogan. When I ask you, what time is it? We we'll say it's nation time. Yeah. What time is it? It's nation time. It means it's time to think of the nation and not the political party. It's nation time. Today, for the next four episodes of Talk Shop, I'll be giving free advice. I'm going to start with my advice to the vice president, Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia. He's going to get my first advice. The next advice will go to JDM, John Dramani Mahama. I also have Alan online, Cheddar online. This is free advice, so, but you can't miss any episode. But I'm going to take a commercial break. When we come back, free advice. And the first person to get my advice, Bagumia. Stick around, folks. What time is it? It's nation time. We'll be right back. <laughs> is it the luxurious rooms? Or the serene green surroundings? Is it the tempting swimming pool? Or the classy conference room? Or the cute gift shop? Maybe it's our chef's array of cooking delights. Whichever way, it's all about Cactus Creek. A most respected hotel. 0559039507 Hi my name is Angela Metal, a massage therapist at Cactus Creek. My job is simply to pamper you with the three hours, to relax you, to revitalize you, and to rejuvenate you. Come and let me pamper you. 055 Folks, what time is it? It's nation time. Let's just say now the focus is on the nation, not any political party. All the parties, we are now going to force them to focus on the nation. It's nation time. And I decided that for the next few episodes of Talk Shop, I'm going to give free advice. Me there may a kind of I give free advice. And then again, Charlie, very soon, very soon, coming soon, oh boy here will be 68 years. <laughs> I'm older than uh, Mahama, I'm older than Baumia, Alan Kra, I don't know, maybe I'm older than him. I'm older than Cheddar, Cheddar, they say me bar, you know. So I've reached the point where I think I have the capacity to give free advice to all the presidential candidates. Mm? And I'm going to start with DMB, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. It is possible. Now, let, I'm giving free advice, so before I even start to talk about Dr. Baumia, I want you to take a look at his advices or four of the strong parts of his campaign team. Take a look at this. I want you to take a look at this, my dear friends. This is the solid campaign team of uh, Dr. Baumia. Look at the picture, you know. First, we have Dan Boche. We have Antoinette 
Tribo Daku. Then we have Austin Frimpon Kodria. Then we have Dennis Edward Miracles Abwaji. Look at that, man. Show some love for the team, man. <laughs> so that's a strong team. That's a strong team. And, and I, I, Dan Boche, I know personally, you know, he's a good friend of mine. The rest of them I haven't actually met. But this is the point I'm making, man. This team that I've named, if there has a team behind Baumia, then, sorry team, I'm a little disappointed. I am a little disappointed. Let me tell you why. My dear team and folks that are listening, Dr. Your Excellency Baumia, I think the greatest thing that is working against you now are your own pronouncements. Dr. Baumia, the things that you have said in the past are the only things that people are using against you. Nothing else, though. Just your pronouncements. And the team, that's why I brought the team, you know. I was thinking for the team that if you are now packaging uh, Dr. Baumia for the high office of presidency, it is possible, a.k.a. And it is possible. I was thinking that if you're packaging for presidency, then you have to actually rebrand the guy. Very, very important. You have to rebrand him. Unfortunately, rightly or wrongly, rightly or wrongly, you, Dr. Baumia, I mean, I don't want to sound disrespectful, but people even actually say his name is Baulaya. With all respects, with all respects, it is not, it is not a good position to have your vice president in to be given such a name. Okay? And I was hoping that once he's been presented as the candidate to break the eight, maybe the great team, and I mentioned all the names, you could have gotten together and tried some rebranding and tried to, 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 to reinvent Dr. Baumia. But it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Folks, Doc, please, you want to be president, Chill small. And your team is supposed to help advise you on what makes you look presidential. You know, the other time when I did my show on communication, I was up against your team because that time I think you went to the nurses training college and you're talking about the nurses and the promises to pay the allowances because the previous government wasn't paying the allowances and everything. And sadly, Veep, sadly, uh, a student then confronted you and said since she's been in the school, she had never received any allowance. Until you came out to apologize that when you come back to Accra, you make sure that the finance department goes there. This was a no-no. I kid you not, oh, it was so unpresidential. And I remember coming here, talking about presidential communication and telling you or telling the people out there that your communicators messed up. That should not have happened. You know what I'm saying? So your greatest enemy now, Doc, is that people play back things that you said, your own words are being played back against you. So I'm saying chill small, man. Please. And this is going to all politicians. Don't be in such a rush to make promises. Because, because these things will come back to haunt you. And I'm giving my free advice to Dr. Baumia. Please, take it easy, man. Adapt a presidential posture. And your team should, should be able to manage you even in terms of the things you say. And I'm going to play a few things back for you to understand what I'm saying, okay? I think it was maybe a year or two ago, do you remember? You made this statement that the Ghana card can now take you to about 44,000 international airports you can use the Ghana card. Let, 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 let me actually refer to something you said. Take a look at this. By the end of the first quarter next year, the Ghana card will be recognized globally 
as an e-passport and can be read and verified in all ICAO compliant borders. That is 197 countries, 44,000 airports in the world. When this happens, holders of the Ghana card will be allowed to board any flight to Ghana. Furthermore, the good news for diaspora Ghanaians is that when the Ghana Immigration uh, Service is linked to the NIA architecture, and that will be soon, diaspora Ghanaians who hold the Ghana card should not have to obtain visas to return to Ghana. Your Excellency, that was two years ago. That was two years ago. Can we say now that the Ghana card allows you access to 44,000 international airports? Yes, you're right. The, the International Aviation Organization has, has recognized that there is a Ghana card, but it has not gotten to the point where it has accepted it yet as a travel document. No, it hasn't. You know, and if you think I'm lying, please go to the U.S., go to the U.K., go everywhere outside of ECOWAS and get to the airport and say, oh, I came with my Ghana card and see if they can let you in. They won't let you in. You know what I'm saying? So if as the VIP and now that you are touting yourself, especially as the digital guru, make a statement that you have a Ghana card that is acceptable, now you can enter 44,000 airports in the world, it is wrong. Look, apart from the fact that the International Aviation Organization has recognized this, all the countries, the 197 member countries, the government of Ghana will have to sit down and negotiate with them unilaterally for them to come to an agreement and say, we in Ghana, we have this agreement. They can bring their Ghana card and go through. Until that has taken place, no! It is not right to say that the Ghana card can take you everywhere. Please, team members that are packaging you, they should not come from the vice. I don't know whether I'm blaming the team because, Mr. Vice, you two are small boy, sir. You are a brilliant man. You are actually a deputy governor for the Bank of Ghana. So you two, you know. So I can't load every the blame on the, on the team. You two should know this, that we have not gotten to the point where you can use the Ghana card in, in, in 100 and whatever countries because you have the Ghana card. It is not true. So please, please, refrain from these statements. And team, the Minimaya Dambuchi, Dambuchi, you're a brilliant politician. You are a grassroots politician. You have run for president yourself. You know the deal. Tame your candidate. At least his pronouncements should not be held against him. This pronouncement was made over two years ago. You know? Don't be in a hurry to promise. And this is going to all politicians, though. You know what surprises me most is that, um, you know, after all the promises that the MPP made, lots of them, and that allowed them to win power. Lots of promises, so one district, one factory, we're going to build, give one consistency, one million dollars, we're going to do this, we're going to build the sky train, the first ever in uh, Western Africa, we're going to do this, that. All these lofty promises was what gave people hope. Shall let's bring the MPP in so that we can experience some real change. And it didn't happen. And surprisingly, me, I was thinking that this time around, as we go into the election, there are going to be less promises because we have a case study. So there was a government that came into power on the back of promises and didn't deliver. So I'm thinking that we have a case study in tea. I'm on from promise, promise by heart, sir, but I was wrong. We are still hearing the promises. We are still hearing the promises. You know, recently, uh, and I, this is a free advice to uh, uh, Dr. Baumia. Recently, you were promising that we are going to be building the e-gates in Ghana. By the end of this year, uh, the, the, the Terminal 3 will have e-gates. And so when you travel and you get to Ghana and you have the Ghana card, you just point the Ghana card to the gate and then the gate opens and then you go through, you don't even have to go through immigration. Really? Really?
Now, I'm hoping that one day I can get you on my show, Your Excellency, very, very respectfully. But there are a few things that I think you can explain more to the Ghanaian people. And if I'm, I've sent the invitation, if you ever get it and be a, my guest, I think that's one of the things I want to ask you. How many e-gates are we going to be establishing at the airport? Is it one big e-gate or several e-gates? And if I'm from Ghana, I've come from the plane, I use my uh, Ghana car, the gate opens for me. What if the other passengers following me are not from Ghana, maybe from UK? Do they all go walk inside with me? Or the gates will just open for only the Ghanaians with the Ghana, Ghana card? And how many gates? Some these airlines, they are, when the aircraft lands, we have over 400 people in one aircraft. What if three aircraft has landed at the same time and they're all going in? How does that work? That if you're Ghana and you have a Ghana card here, you point yours and the gate opens and you don't go through immigration. These things are very, very, very interesting. All I need to do is if I get a chance to sit down with you one on one, I'll ask you, how will the e gate specifically work? You see, these are things. That's why I'm saying, don't be in a rush to promise. e gates in Ghana, by the end of this year, uh, yet you are, we are watching, you know. Let, let's listen to exactly what he said. Take a look at this. In fact, before the end of this year, if you arrive in Ghana at Kotoka Airport, you don't even need to go to an immigration officer. We are putting together the e-gates. You put your Ghana card, it will open for you, and you pass and enter. The e-gates will come into work in Ghana before the end of this year. In Ghana, before the end of this year. So yeah, there was a pros that when you enter Ghana, you use your Ghana card and straight the e-gate opens and you don't go through immigration. You're finished. But the details, what are the details? How even feasible is it? I don't know. And the last thing you have said to Honorable Vice, Your Excellency, is that you are arranging with the telcos so that they are going to introduce a credit system so that you can own a mobile phone and pay small, small. It is a one city a month that will pay small, small. Your Excellency, you may surprise me that some of the mobile phone companies already have some kind of credit system already. You know, with MTN, people who have MTN can even borrow money from MTN, and then as you pay, you know, they, 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 they have a credit system that allows certain things to be done, you know. I, my advice is this, Mr. Vice, if that's what you want to do, if you want to build a credit system for Ghana, which we need, we do need a credit, credit, proper credit system of reporting in Ghana. Any here, yeah? nobody can doubt that we do need it. I agree with you. We do need a proper credit system where it is done and you can call a credit bureau for KSM's credit history and they can say he's grade A, grade 2, or he's not credit worthy. We have that system. Well, not we, but developed countries have that system where you can call and maybe using the Ghana card, you can access somebody's credit history. We don't have it in Ghana. And Mr. Vice, if it's something that you want to do in Ghana, amen. I support you. But rather than saying, oh, I'm bringing in telephones because I've arranged with telcos, and we, you can start paying small, small, you know, Your Excellency, you, you, it's not right. That is no way to build a credit system in any country, unless, of course, Ghana is taking a different path, I don't know. You know, so I would rather be comfortable with the vice saying that when, he, when he's elected to be president this time, he's going to build a proper credit system in this country, which we need. And that credit system too is not just about phones though. If you're a farmer and you want to buy a caterpillar, you can go to the bank, they can check your credit rating, and they can give you a loan to buy a caterpillar. If you are uh, 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 somebody who wants to build a house, they can check your credit rating and give you a mortgage. It's not small, small to pay over phones. It's a proper credit system. If that's what you are talking about building, then yes, make it your campaign platform. And the team that you are behind him, 
these are the things I expect you to do. Sit down with the vice. Vice, you need credit system. We're gonna have. It's it's buga buga credit system. You know, let's do a well-established credit system. And you as a president, you want to take the lead to build a proper credit system in Ghana. I will understand. I will support. But for crying out loud, when you promise people that, oh, don't worry, when I come, I work with the telcos. And then you, they, they, you can, we can remove the import uh, charges for mobile phones so that when they come, you can pay us more, more. And then the people are cheering you on, yeah, 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 yeah. And when they are cheering you on and I watch them, and I may get into trouble for this, but you know what I say? Small minds. At the risk of being attacked and insulted, I will say it again, small minds. How do you allow a politician to tell you that in Chibi Amiba power, there a phone that is costing what? 2,000 <laughs> CDs or even 5,000 CDs, you can pay small, small, give uh, one Ghana CD and the telco will give it to you. No, 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 just in case some of you may not have heard it, let, let, let's, let's listen to him in this clip. We will make access to mobile phones affordable. And the other mobile companies, you know, you're getting Katia in Kitaho. Now you have the mobile phones, you know, I'm a Nipa, that's Mount Vidia, what's here, one city, two city, one city, two city, Katra, Katra, Namuetria, mobile phone before ADA. ADA, you have the star, scheme, you know, every OVR. Because we need everybody to have a smart device. Folks, <laughs> you see, he, people will share you on. And Ghanaians, please, we have to be in that frame of mind where we have to know that this is the last four months of the campaign season. Things will be said, promises will be made, but you are the ones supposed to think about these promises and say, which one? Is right and which one isn't honestly honestly you know so I'm saying and the reason I draw the team in is that from what I know before the candidate speaks the team has sat down the team has met the team has decided the areas in which the candidate is going to speak on the team has actually decided what he's supposed to say and not supposed to say. Or I don't know, maybe he decides to talk without the knowledge of the team, I don't know. But the free advice I'm giving, and please don't tell me that this is all just a Baumia thing. Let me tell you the, the lineup. When I finish with this free advice for Baumia, I have to do my free advice to uh, John Mahama, I'll do my free advice to uh, Alan Chomating, even Cheda or primarily free advice. I said the only people I own bother are there are those who run for president as hobbies. <laughs> eh? <laughs> you don't hear anything from them. Four years quiet. Just before the election, did you see all the abundance coming in? Uh, that man running from the LPG in Crevin saying, Mr. Palu, LPG. What does LPG mean? Liquid. What? <laughs> Liquid. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm just having a little fun. Apalua Sari said he's running for president. Kwea Dronko, so running for president. Uh, Hassan Ayeriga, respectfully, I'm running for president. I don't know who else is out there. So I'm saying that apart from these people that I say they run for president as a hobby, all the rest that I think are running for president seriously, I have free advice for. And I'm just starting with uh, Mr. Baumia because he is with the MPP. The MPP is in government and he is the flag bearer of the MPP. So it's best that I start with him. That's why I started with him. But yes, in a few days time, I'll be here giving free advice to Mr. John Mahama as well. So with the rest of the serious candidates. But let me, let, let me get to the point where I start wrapping up. DMB. The first time I met you, maybe you don't remember, but that was in, long ago under Kufu administration when um, uh, Kufu was going through the re-denomination. The Bank of Ghana governor then, is he Dr. Aqua? 
Yeah, Dr. Akwa invited me to the bank. And the discussion was that he wanted me to use my humor. You know how I can combine humor and seriousness and, and send a good message out? Dr. Akwa told me that he wants me to do something like that for the reading nomination, get people to understand what the process is, but he wanted me to use humor. So he invited me to the Bank of Ghana and I met him. And that was the first time I met you. And I swear to God, you were a very calm, cool gentleman. I, I just fell in love with you when they said, well then, that's the deputy governor, you know? That's the first time we met. The second time we met was when you and Samira came on my show. Maybe you don't remember, but thank God it's Friday. I don't know if, you, if you've done other shows with Samira, but that was the first show that you and Samira did together as a couple. That was when you had been uh, selected by Nanado as his vice president for the MPP. You were on the show. You're a kind man. You're a decent man. We became friends after. So all I'm saying is that this is nothing personal though. This is just in your own interest as a presidential candidate, my friend, that your team should be working with you so that your utterances are not used against you. They're making So that's my free advice, you know, to, to uh, DMB. I know it is possible. <laughs> It is possible that you be president. I'm so, I know. It is possible that you break the eight. I know, you know. But I'm saying that if you really want to break the eight, if you really want to make it possible, then watch your pronouncements and tell your team to also help you in how you make these pronouncements. Because unfortunately for you, the only things that can be used against you now are your own words. On that note, I'm going to wrap up and really appeal to you and appeal to your team. Excellent man and a woman, I named all of you, Mipacho, Mipacho. Let him stand out as a presidential candidate and not, and not as a, 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 a frustrated man, you know. Sometimes, Dr. Baumia, you come across as if you are so bent on being a president, say, you are frustrated. You know, don't, don't sound frustrated, man. Win or lose, you are who you are, and it will not determine your beginning or end. But don't come across as you are frustrated. It's not necessary. We know you. <laughs> but watch your pronouncements and make sure that your pronouncements can never be used against you. And my next advice is going to go to my good friend, JDM. But until then, it's nation time. The question I ask is, what time is it? It's nation time. Wonderful Ghana, we are thinking about the nation and not political parties. Truth crash to earth shall rise again. See you next time when I continue with my free advice to the serious presidential candidates.